Because it's a family business, of course, you know, working with family can always be tricky. I was so young. I was 20, 25, 26 when we had this idea and I had to conceptualize everything from like the ground up. Yeah, it was really, really tricky for me at the beginning. There were a lot of tears. Top Chef Thailand. Chef Tham Shudari Thepa Kham, the owner of the famous one Michelin star restaurant Ban Thepa, and the youngest contestant and winner of Top Chef Thailand Season 1. Chef Tham has made a name for herself traveling the world to showcase modern Thai cuisine. She is an advocate of food waste reduction after being the chef ambassador for the Thai Harvest SOS and UNEP campaigns from 2015 to 2017. And more recently, Chef Tham was the only Thai female chef to be invited to the World Gourmet Festival in 2022. Without further ado, let us introduce you to Chef Tham. Over 75% of the people watching this video are not subscribed. Could you please take a moment to subscribe to the Tiger Podcast? It would really help us out. So, Chef Tham, can you tell us a little bit about your background and how that will make us understand who you are as a person today? Okay, so I guess I was um, born and raised in Thailand, Bangkok, Thailand, and um, grew up here with a big family. We lived like four huge family, all of us. I went to um, different uh, international schools here in Bangkok and then moved over to um, the UK to finish my high school education and then um, eventually went to um, culinary school in the, the US. Yeah. And uh, was your family big on eating in gatherings and all, all of that good stuff? Oh, yes, massively. So the home that we live in in the home that I grew up, uh, there was about 20, 25 of us, and we would, you know, have dinners together at my grandmother's house. So it was like a compound house. So we all lived in the same, like, um, area. So we would always have family dinners, and food was, like, a very big topic of discussion most days. Um, so, yeah, I would say so. And who does most of the cooking in your family? Um, so at my grandmother's house, we have um, my grandma's cook who's been with her for like forever. So we would have um, like her old recipes sort of like redone and then we would talk about how it changed like over time. And my aunt and my uncle are also really good cooks and they also bring stuff to the table as well. Yeah. Can I make an assumption that you are in a Chinese, Thai Chinese kind of family household? Um, Yes, I would. Yeah, we're Thai Chinese, but I would say that we we're not very traditional Chinese. So um, I think would I would say we're more Thai than we are Chinese for sure. Yeah. How did you become fascinated with cooking in the first place? Um, honestly, I was never um, really into it. I enjoyed the eating part much, <laughs> much more. Um, but what brought me into the kitchen in the first place was sort of my interest in like sports science and kind of like doing <clears throat> like team sports. Part of like the physical education program was to like talk about, you know, sports nutrition. So that's when I started having to sort of learn about how to control your diet, how to count calories and measure like your protein intake and stuff like that. So I had to start cooking for myself. So it wasn't part of like my, you know, growing up being wanting, you know, wanting to cook or be in the kitchen at all. It was sort of um, accidental how it all happened. So I started to have to cook for myself to do this sort of like homework for my PE class. Oh, wow. So yeah. you were an athlete first. Yeah. I mean, I, I loved doing all the sports at school. Yeah. Which one was your favorite? Um, I was very proud about this. <laughs> <laughs> I was the captain of the basketball team oh, wow. um, in high school. And um, it's, yeah, it's definitely my favorite sport. But I, I did everything, um, football, softball, swimming, um, like athletics, everything. 
I yeah. think now it explains your height because you're quite tall as well. Am I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think for Thai standards, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for Thai standards, probably. So clearly, I think you kind of um, pointed out here that you have a lot of interest in food, and that's why you graduated from the University of Nottingham with a degree in food science mm. and nutrition, and then went on to study at the International Culinary Center in New York City. Um, was that when you knew that? Food was definitely your calling. I know that you said that you were an athlete and you wanted to gain more nutritional kind of knowledge. Right. But then you wanted to continue being an athlete, or now your perception was like, no, I think I want to be a chef now. Well, to be honest, my dreams of becoming like a professional athlete were kind of like crushed when I moved to the UK. To I went to boarding school for. Um, to a school that was very um, highly sort of like known and rated for their like sports program. Um, but then I quickly realized like I was like I could not compete. You know, I was in, in Bangkok. I was like the captain of the team and everything. But going over there, they were like, you know, starting practice at like four in the morning. And then like, after school, it was very, very intense. You know, they were training for the Olympics at Whoa. that time. Yeah. So the I was like, this is, yeah, this is like a different, different league for me. So I quickly realized that, okay, maybe the dreams of like being a, becoming a professional athlete wasn't as realistic as I, I, I had hoped it would be. Uh, so I sort of had to pivot. And the next closest thing and something that I was, interested in was nutrition so you know like if I couldn't become an athlete maybe I could like help make them you know perform at a higher level or something like that yeah oh, wow so that's how I started to get into nutrition I see yeah. and can you tell us some of the profound mm. learnings that you've learned from while you were studying abroad or working for restaurants abroad um yeah, absolutely. I mean, going to school, um, I went at like a, a later age, I think, compared to a lot of um, Thai kids who go go abroad. But um, I think independence was like a very big thing that I learned that, you know, kids over there are very, very independent and um, they're very um, vocal about, you know, their thoughts, which I think even being in an international school here, I was never really around that sort of like setting of where kids would voice their opinion you know so much so over there that's really what I learned that you know we we are able to sort of like voice our opinions and you know raise your hand ask questions even though they could be sometimes like provoking to the teacher um, and that's really like what I um, was exposed to for the first time when I went to school abroad um, and then, of course, working, it was a completely different, like, environment to what I had ever, you know, been around. Just, like, people from all different types of, like, backgrounds and experiences sort of coming together in this very, like, high-pressured environment. So it was very, very intense, um, but definitely, like, the best learning experience for me, yeah. I know that in some of the mm. restaurants that you work for, they're ranked like on the top, top of right, like the right. world's list. And so therefore, there must be tons of pressure mm -hmm. in the kitchen itself. Yeah. Were there any moments in time where you thought, you know what, this is too much pressure for me. I, I just want to quit. Um, there was there was a kitchen. I, I won't mention the name that I sort of went into like stage for the day. That's what we call it. Um, just to go and see if you would be able to sort of join the team and then for them to sort of see your capabilities as well and then after that stage I was just like I cannot be here you know like I'm not not because like it was too high pressured but I think it was just like the the mentality and the the mindset was just so like military style mm. that I was like this is I like I like discipline I like to be like pressured but I think that for me was like next level a little bit too much yeah sorry i'm not too familiar with that term is it like an audition to yeah do yeah it? yeah so oh, wow. stodges are basically you know people who come in for either like a day two days or like a week just to see whether you can um yeah work with the team and sort of for the the team to sort of see your performance as well and and make a judgment yeah Wow, that's a little bit insane. Yeah, yeah, it's really intense. But we do it here, though. We do it here in Bangkok as oh, well. Oh, really? Yeah. At, like, five-star restaurants, I guess. Yeah, so, like, the because you can sort of, like, take someone based on, like, an interview. Mm -hmm. You have to sort of see how they move around in the kitchen, how they, you know. The first thing I would check is, like, if their knives are sharp. Mm. Um, so that's just, like, a very simple 
way to look at, you know, if the, someone is ready or not to, you know, join the team. Wow, that's pretty intense, <laughs> right? Can you list out some of the restaurants that you work for abroad that you're very proud of? Absolutely. So um, I've I've only worked for two restaurants, and one of them was actually um, an internship. Mm-hmm. So I worked at I interned at John George's in New York. Um, it was three Michelin stars at the time when I was there, um, and also Blue Hill at Stone Barns. This is where I spent. The most time working, um, so about almost two years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I learned um, how to call this. So I found a quote from you, actually, from a different interview, and I want to read it out. Oh and God, then I'm ask scared. You, <laughs> ask you some <laughs> questions about it. But it says here, Chef Tham was a sous chef at Blue Hill at Stone Barns in New York. And when she came back to Bangkok, she couldn't find a restaurant that lived up to Blue Hills standards and philosophies. Now, this is a quote from the Time Out magazine in 2020. Can right. you tell us a little bit about what those standards and philosophies are and how did that inspire you to open up Ban Thai Pha? Right. So I'm, I must like correct the quote a little bit. I think what I was saying sort of was like the, the idea about like, the sustainability and the local sourcing part of it. I'm, I don't mean to sort of say anything um, negative or downplay the, the work that, you know, restaurants in Thailand or in Bangkok do at all at that time. But I think it was just sort of the mindset um, of, you know, New York kitchen, New York restaurant, and also just like the philosophy of, you know, Blue Hill being so... Um, just being very strong in their in their stance, you know, for more sustainable sourcing, um, using local ingredients and showcasing like products of the season. And they even go as far as sort of like their own breeding and, you know, having the farm and everything. So I really was like attached to that and sort of was looking for something like that when I moved back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I guess that's a, the philosophy that they really abide by. Is there any one person at uh, Blue Hills that really inspired you to do this? I mean, obviously, you know, Chef Dan Baba. But I think over the years, I mean, I met so many incredible cooks um, and chefs. And they all have inspired me to be, you know, where I am today, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for people who have never heard of Bante Pa before, how would you describe uh, Bante Pa to somebody who's never heard of it before? Um, so Ban Thai Pa is, uh, it's a family home, uh, you know, that we sort of renovated into uh, a restaurant and a garden, uh, a culinary garden. And um, we basically, our goal is to, you know, deliver like a Thai dining experience that is a little bit different, uh, I guess a bit more modern, more uh, creative, you know, without boundaries as many boundaries as you know the realms of traditional Thai cooking Um, and just yeah to sort of like be a little bit more out of the box with what we can do with Thai food. What do you mean by that like modern is it similar to the word fusion? Oh I really I really don't like that (laughs) word. Oh no. (laughs) Um, But I mean it depends on how you define define it I guess I mean for me it's really us using Thai produce, Thai ingredients made by Thai people, grown by Thai people, and also cooked by Thai people. But we're just doing it with the knowledge and the creativity and the experiences of someone who has um, been able to work for different chefs and gone abroad to you know, eat and experience other cuisines as well. Um, and I think it's just something that we wanna, wanna do with Thai ingredients. Um, so I don't know if you could say it's fusion. There are definitely more than, you know, just Thai techniques in the in the food and in the behind the dishes. But um, yeah, I never use the word fusion to describe my cuisine. So understood. It's modern Thai. Cuisine. Yeah. Creative Thai would work, too. Yeah. So your restaurant, Ban Thai Pa, I understand that there is a 12 seater communal table. Can mm-hmm. you tell us the inspiration behind that kind of setting? Yeah, so originally um, the the plan for the restaurant was never to be uh, as big as it is today. Uh, we had one table in the kitchen of 12 seats, a long table. So a communal table with multiple groups of people sitting and dining together. And that sort of concept was very new, I think, for Bangkok back um, in, what was it, 20. 
2018, 2019. Um, so that was the idea of sort of bringing people together from different groups and different, you know, um, backgrounds and experiences and having dinner together, basically, you know, and sharing, oh, like, how did you hear about this place? You know, what are your interests in food? And just to start a conversation about the food and what they were eating and stuff. And I, I sort of liked that, that eating culture. Um, and that's what I wanted to bring um, at the beginning when we started Bante Pa. I see. Yeah. I also have another quote <laughs> oh, <laughs> from <God. you laughs> back in the day. But let me ask you uh, what you mean by this quote. Sure. You said that um, I like when people feel uncomfortable sitting next to strangers. Mm. I want my guests to have the experience of sharing and talking to each other. Can you elaborate on that? I found that very interesting. Yeah. So I feel like, OK, Thai culture, like if you go to a bar in New York, it the chances of you ending up talking to a complete stranger is like, yeah, it's pretty normal, right? That happens. But I think here in Bangkok, it's really rare for different groups that don't know each other to sort of mingle. And I, I was just like, I didn't really understand it because I had spent like three years in New York by this point. Um, and I was like, why don't we just bring, you know, random groups together? And what I did notice was that there were quite a few like, awkward moments between groups, especially groups that were not as open to sort of like mingle and um, just talk about themselves, I guess. But then we would have nights that were like really amazing where groups like four different groups ended up, you know, knowing each other from this dinner and um, yeah, be becoming friends and stuff like that. So I, I just really enjoyed that idea. But for me, the fact that um, groups who wouldn't sort of like chat to, to each other would bond over the food, you know, like, I really like this one or like this one is a bit different. Like, what is this? You know, so it was sort of kickstart a conversation, what we were presenting at that at that point on the dinner table. So I, I just like that idea, not to make anyone uncomfortable, obviously, <laughs> but right. I just think it's so nice when you you do end up, you know, sharing uh, an experience with different people. And when you opened it firstly, what was the clientele like? Was it more foreigners? Was it more Thais? Oh, no. I would say it was like 95% um, Thai. Oh. Yeah, just because no one had really heard about us. We were like so hidden and a little bit far further out from the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How would you describe yourself as a chef? And are you different from other chefs? Um, <laughs> how would I describe myself? Uh, I think I'm very... Um, particular about the things that, you know, the way that I like things to be done, to be carried out, to be organized in the kitchen. Um, and I'm very sort of, uh, <laughs> how do I say this? Just, I like things to be done in a timely manner, you know? So I like to push, I like to hustle, I like to make sure that things are um, done efficiently. So that is some, that is the type of person that I am in the kitchen. Um, but I also, you know, treat everyone sort of with respect because I've seen kitchens and I've seen chefs who I think you like you might have heard, you know, like the culture, the chef culture. Sometimes it can be very aggressive um, and very daunting for like a young cook coming up, you know, to, to go into and that being your work environment. So I'm very aware of that. Um, so everyone is treated with respect in the kitchen, but you know, you also have that sort of underlying um, understanding from everyone that everything has to sort of be done with the certain standard and then in a certain time period, yeah, as well. Did you overlook every single aspect of the restaurant, like from HR, like hiring people to the garden itself, to the operations in the kitchen? <laughs> yes, I am still doing that now, right. <laughs> yeah. What do you find most enjoyable in, in which ones? Um, honestly, I think I'm just like, I just love to be in the kitchen, right? So mm. that's like, that's my, my domain. And that's where I love to be. But um, now sort of becoming like a business owner as well, I have to wear a lot of different hats. And it's very, very challenging for me sometimes to communicate because I'm, I'm used to communicating in the kitchen and that's sort of like very like abrupt and very just straightforward type of communication doesn't always work, right? In mm. And especially in sort of like the back office, it's very different ways to communicate. So I had to sort of adjust um, and you know, the, the bluntness and the just the straightforward sort of like 
communicating sort of that type of way doesn't always work. Mm. So I had to learn that. And HR also is like so tricky. It's so hard to, you know, judge people, interview and, you know, evaluate everyone. It's completely, it was completely new to me a year ago. And I had to, when we were like really in the height of like building up Bantepa, I had to learn that like very quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And how do you manage your time, you know, like with the kitchen? Because I know that you're very busy and yeah. then you have your personal life. How do you manage the personal life, work-life balance? Well, you know, if you speak to my partner, she'll say that I don't <laughs> um, at all. She manages my time. Uh, but no, I basically try to split up my days. So when I go in, I'll do office work for like an hour and then I'll go into the kitchen, make sure everything is okay, and then I'll come back after lunch to do, you know, another couple hours of office work, and then it's, like, getting ready for service time, and then I'll do service. So that's sort of, like, my day. Yeah. You know, you're relatively young. You're right. also um, female. Have you ever had any pushback in the kitchen from your own staff, like, being maybe perhaps a bit older or male, and they're like, no, I know what I'm doing, and how do you manage that? Um, I think... I think pushback from my staff, n not as much. I think what I would, what I see is like sometimes like comments, especially from, yeah, from older, from older staff and also from, yeah, from male. Usually it's like older men, you know, that have some sort of like, not an issue, but they just feel like maybe I don't always know what I'm doing, which maybe I don't, you know, but sometimes it's very, um, it's very uncomfortable when it's voiced in a way that you know how it's, you know, meant to mean type situation. So it, it can, I can be put in very uncomfortable situations, but I'm, I don't want to say I'm used to it or I, I, but I feel like I know how to handle it. And with, with, um, employees who are, you know, older than me also, I feel like I treat them with complete respect. So I, I expect the same. If there is something that I'm, you know, doing not, well or not correctly by all means you know I'm very much like open to that sort of communication and feedback all the time yeah so that's more western style I think that you have a dialogue with your right. employees and you're open for feedback as well you don't mind like oh it's not like I'm the biggest here but you can also give me feedback is this correct is this yeah yeah no absolutely because mm -hmm. like I know that I'm not I don't know everything you know about especially like the business side of of it all so you know I'm we have so many meetings at Vandeva because we, we literally, that, that's how I want to run my business is to, for everyone to sort of like have a voice, you know, an input and a suggestion. And we go around the circle and we say, okay, what were the thoughts from last night? What we could have done better? Um, and yeah, we, were, we always troubleshoot everything sort of as a team. Um, but at the end of the day, someone does have to make like an executive decision. And that, that is usually me. I love that. <laughs> and I also have a question. Have you ever had any sort of negative feedback from customers or like every day? Every day? <laughs> oh, really? There is something. There is always something, you know, mm -hmm. all the time. I mean, it's very normal, I think, in um, the F&B business for guests um, to have their, you know, their feed to give their feedback sort of um and whether it's positive or negative we have to take it and we always try to work on like the negative things that we know we can improve on yeah does it demoralize you sometimes or you're like nah i'm over this let's just find um, solutions i feel like you know feedback can be given in different ways uh you can do it in a way that really helps sort of support the industry and help us grow and you know recommendations and I mean I don't mind you know getting very strong like negative comments as long as you know it's something that sort of makes sense and is really sort of points out things that we are doing wrong mm -hmm. I understand that and I'll take that like fully like you know on the chin and it's it's absolutely fine um, but there are some comments that are you know made to be more hurtful to like attack rather than to feedback and, you know, help us grow and help us in, improve. So stuff like that is like sometimes really tricky to sort of compartmentalize like, you know, your emotions, but okay, this is something that you do need to work on as well, you know, like 
but it's it's hard sometimes, yeah. Right. So constructive criticism, yes. Yeah, non absolutely. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I also have a question. So your restaurant has earned a one Michelin star. Yep. Can you tell me the process of how that became? Um, to be honest, I'm still I'm so shocked about it. Like I didn't when we started this uh, project, Bante Pa. We never really expected um, the star or anything close to it. We just wanted to, you know, like cook in uh, my family's home and just experiment with Thai ingredients so to to be able to achieve this award was like tremendous for the team it was you know but it, it's been a lot of you know hard work and perseverance throughout the years of everything that's happened in the past couple of years with the industry as well and um, so we've we've just been trying to put out the best food the best quality of service the best experience for guests and it to be acknowledged for that is is pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. <laughs> Did somebody have to put in the name of the restaurant in the hat for somebody to come and verify if this is like actually legit or? Um, I honestly I don't even know their process. Oh seriously, so oh. I just got an email one day, um, being like, okay, we're conducting a survey from Michelin. Um, we're conducting a survey. Um, you are a restaurant that we're interested to put in our guide. So I just filled out the form and just emailed it back to them and didn't hear back from them for about, I don't know, like three, four months maybe. Um, and then there was like this whole row like happening with in the chefs like behind the scenes about like, oh, you know, the Michelin Awards are coming up. And I was like, but what does it mean? Like, I don't know anything about it. Like, how does... So we got the, the invitation and that was like um when everyone was talking about it so i was like okay i got an email to like an invitation to go so what does this mean <laughs> and they're like oh my god i think you got it so we were like ecstatic yeah oh wow really like cool. listening to that second hand i was like oh <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah with me over here i'm like whoa what's going on yeah what a pleasant surprise yeah it was really really cool <laughs> yeah and there must have been some dark moments like while you're operating it or before you opened it um can you tell me some of the challenges that have come up while creating bante pa yeah of course i mean because it's a family business, of course, you know, working with family can always be tricky. And I feel like I was so young. I was 20, 25, 26 when we had this idea. And I had to conceptualize everything from like the ground up. We had like an old home, you know, a residential home. So we had to think about building it, designing it like the materials we would use, how we would, like the flow of operation, the service and everything. And I didn't have the experience back then. And this is like me being completely honest. So I had to sort of just like stumble, just like fall and get back up. And then, you know, working with my father, who was also very like a very um, business, you know, person. And um, yeah, it was really, really tricky for me at the beginning. There were a lot of tears, I'm not Aww. gonna lie. <laughs> Right. Yeah. But, you know, um, they say, I don't know the correct statistics for this, but they say there's a high percentage of restaurants not making it through the first year or two years. Yeah. Why do you think your restaurant has survived for many, many years? Not only that winning a Michelin star award. Why is that? Um, I, I mean, I'm I think I'm a very stubborn person. And, you know, I've been... I've been told no a lot as well. Like it, it wasn't always easy, you know? I didn't sort of like just get all the jobs that I wanted. I went to like, when I first moved to New York, um, I was looking around for all these like internships and no one would take me, you know? And I went to so many different restaurants and they were like, no, 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 no. So it took me a lot of time to, before I got um, John George's and, um, so I'm sort of used to feeling a little bit like rejected. So I don't really, I don't really mind feeling, I don't know, just like failing. Yeah, I, f I feel like, okay, it's okay. I failed this time, but then there's always a next time. So just, I think being stubborn about business is really, really important. And just sort of fighting for what you are passionate about is, is really important in doing business and sort of being being successful with it long term. Yeah. Right. 
but you coming from a Thai Chinese background, yeah. have you ever gotten pushed back by your own parents? Like, no, you should study so and so. Like, why are you going into food science? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So this is what I mean about like our family being a bit more Thai than traditional uh, Chinese. Yes. So they, my parents are like incredible people, and honestly, they never forced us as kids. Like, uh, my family, my direct family, we have. Uh, there's three of us, three girls. So all of us are doing really random things, right? Like I'm cooking. My sister is now doing like helping me with the the restaurant, and my little sister is in like um, like pet food business. So it's like super like random and weird. Like you would never imagine your kids to you know grow up and do sort of these take these like career paths. But they they were so open and they were like very supportive throughout like my years in in the U- u.s as well yeah mm-hmm. and one last question about your restaurant yep. i noticed ban tepa is that shortened from your last name yes so tepa kham is my last name yeah but then i realized in the english spelling it's different from your last name why mm-hmm. is that um i think it's just more for like pronunciation and like mm-hmm. For people to understand it, my last name is spelled like a little bit funny and like a little bit hard to to read. Mm-hmm. So we we try to make it like just more simple. Ah, yeah. okay, got that. At Bantepa, would you also claim that you uh, serve organic food? Is that part of it as well? Ah, uh, I use the term organic very like carefully because mm-hmm. I feel like when you say organic, okay, is it certified organic or is it just organic? because you know that the farmer is not using chemicals, you know? Mm. Um, so we we never we never use the term organic. We really just talk about the people who produce it, the name of the farmers, the name of the, the farms. Sort of showing the, the connection that we as cooks have with the farmers rather than trying to say, this is, you know, certified organic from this valley or this mountain with, you know, clean water, I don't, I don't know, you know, I, we, we don't really try to advertise um, organic food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now let's talk about your top chef Thailand season one. Oh, God. <laughs> it's going to make me sweat. Oh, why? How come? <laughs> God, that was like the most like traumatizing, not traumatizing, I would say. It was just very, very stressful time right. <laughs> during competing in that competition. Yes, I can. I can see why. <laughs> But also, um, what made you join Top Chef Thailand? So that was when I sort of moved back um, from the U.S. And um, it was because of family. Uh, My family wanted me to come back and sort of figure out what I'm going to do with my life, you know, rather than just being in New York. Um, So I was a little bit lost. And coming back, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go back into um, the restaurant business. I was sort of like on the verge of giving up cooking and then going towards more like agricultural farming and stuff like that. Um, And then this opportunity sort of came along and Top Chef is like a a show that I am like addicted to, you know, like being in the the US as well. Or even when I was at school, I used to like watch it online. Um, So when the opportunity like arise, I was just like, I have to try it, you know? It's like once in a lifetime, I might as well have nothing to lose, really. The only thing I was just like, okay, as long as I don't, like, get eliminated the first round, like, I think I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you went all the way to the finals and won. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> well done. And in your opinion, what was the edge that made you win all the way? I honestly think that it was because of how, like, kind of, like, naive I was. I was so carefree, like... I had I really had nothing to lose because I was just like this is so much fun like I am loving this although like it was very stressful I just love to be able to like go in and cook like random things that with whatever they gave you to to cook you know or sometimes like blindfolded to finding the ingredients and stuff I was like this is so fun (laughs) not like obviously every elimination challenge it would just be like oh my god I don't want to go home yet Um, but it was just I think that mentality of like enjoying what I was doing and not putting too much pressure on myself Mm -hmm. um, that made me sort of like be a bit more at ease and sort of put up the best food that I could at the time I think yeah and if you can still recall the show I know that there were many many challenges naming the quick fire round the elimination challenge and the elimination quick fire challenge which one was the most difficult for you personally and why um I think the most 
difficult one for me was the the mystery box, I guess. Because mm. this was like, okay, mi- mystery box box like marathon as well so you didn't you didn't know what you were you had to cook like for the next round and I think we were cooking for maybe like I don't know like eight nine hours straight like just like competing like non-stop because it was like if you lost and then you got eliminated and then you go into the next round it was like we were filming filming until like three four in the morning yeah so I was like dead at this point and then I remember the last one I was like I give up <laughs> and I got right. like durian or something to cook in that one so it was just like yeah that was really tough oh wow ever since you've won the winner of the top chef Thailand yeah how has the public been treating you is it like ooh, like people recognize you more on the streets yeah for sure I think because of like it was a tv thing um but I mean, it wasn't like crazy, you know, it's like a, it's a cooking show. It wasn't like crazy um, fandom type situation. People were just like, oh, my God, like we recognize you from TV. But I was just like, oh, you watch that? Like people watch that? Like I didn't realize how popular the show was at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was very cool. But I just didn't really know how to interact. I think at the beginning I was like a bit awkward, but afterwards like they genuinely were just like congratulations and like I love watching you like do that that was really cool like to talk to talk to people about like the cooking that I did on the show I thought that was really fun um and that people really paid attention you know like people came up to me and asked like how did you do that like what's this I was like oh explaining like it was really really nice oh that's nice Yeah. yeah and what do you have planned for the future Oh, whoa, big question. Uh, Honestly, right now, I am just sort of taking it month by month type situation. Just like so many things are happening at this moment with, um, you know, us being able to travel again and everything. So I think we're we're trying to make sure that Bante Pa is like as stable as it can be. Still, you know, innovating and R&D new dishes and ingredients, um, but also trying to get the word out about us as well, you know, traveling abroad and doing some like showcasing Thai cooking and Thai flavors. I think that's what I want to focus on and sort of just building up on this um, reputation of Bante Pa. Mm. Yeah. And what one advice would you give to somebody who is watching the show and they're super inspired to become a chef? What one <laughs> advice would you give them? Um, I think... You know, the best the best ex- advice I can give uh, to anyone who wants to become a chef, especially if you're like very young and still, you know, in school studying, just is to go into a kitchen, you know, go into the environment of working in a real kitchen, you know, uh, if you can in a hotel or in like uh, fine dining Michelin star restaurant, if that is your, you know, the way that you want to go, because that is really what sort of was like the the starting point for me. I enjoyed being in the kitchen. Not everyone who enjoys cooking enjoys being in the kitchen and working in a kitchen. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, it's always, it's different. If you enjoy cooking, maybe you want to, you know, have a little sort of like cafe or home spot. But if you, you know, think you want to work in a restaurant, go and, you know, ask to work for free and then see if you like that environment because it's really, it's really tough. Is really high pressure, especially if you're at you know a certain level, um, and you have to really love you know the grind and the hustle and the sweat and some blood sometimes you know, <laughs> oh, God, yeah. um, for sure at the beginning. And um, yeah, I think discipline and perseverance and passion for for what you do is is really everything. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you very much, <laughs> Chef Tom, Thank for you, uh, coming here and also parting great advice to us all. Thank you. Uh,